Does the thought of a pork butt excite you? No, not this pork butt, this pork butt. Pulled pork has gotta be one of my favorite things to smoke. So stay with me and I'm gonna be walking you through my steps to smoking the perfect pork butt and we're gonna be doing it on my Weber kettle. And as a bonus, we're gonna be breaking in a new slow and sear that Steve over at SNS Grill sent me. Welcome to Grilling and Chilling with Coleman. And unless the real Coleman is still ice fishing in Texas, I'm Coleman. My passion is helping grilling and barbecue enthusiasts become the backyard grill master they've always wanted to be. Now, if you ask my honey what her favorite thing is that I smoke, it'll be hands down pulled pork. And the great thing about this cut of meat is it's really hard to mess up. So now if you're new to smoking and grilling, I would definitely recommend you starting with a pork butt. Let's get started. The infamous pork butt. I picked this up from a local grocery store here in North Texas. And to be honest with you, for years I thought the pork butt came from the butt of the pig, but that part is actually called the ham. The pork butt actually comes from the shoulder of the pig. Now, when it comes to the quality of meat when you're grilling beef, the grade of meat is extremely important, but for pork butt, it's not as important. But I will make one recommendation. Just make sure you pick up a bone-in pork butt. That bone really helps the meat stay moist, plus it adds a lot of flavor to the meat. Let's go ahead and get this out of the package and trim it up. On one end of the pork butt, you're gonna find the shoulder blade, and on the other one, you're gonna find what's called the money muscle. Now, this is the piece that a barbecue competitor will turn into the judge to win the money. On top of the pork butt, you're gonna find a fat cap, and some of these are gonna be thicker than others. When I trim my pork butt, I like to thin out the fat cap. Not totally remove it, just thin it out a little. The seasoning we're gonna be adding later won't penetrate the cap, but I like to use it to protect the meat while it's smoking. We wanna trim this fat cap down to about an eighth inch thick. Just take a little off at a time until you're happy with it. If the heat on your grill is coming from the top, you're gonna to wanna to smoke this pork butt with the fat cap up. If it's coming from the bottom, you're gonna to wanna to smoke it with the fat cap down. And since we're using the Weber kettle with the slow and sear, the heat's gonna be coming from the top, so we're gonna smoke this pork butt fat cap up. If you choose not to trim the fat cap off your pork butt, at least take a sharp knife and score the top of it. You're gonna to wanna to make cuts that are about a quarter of an inch thick and about an inch apart. Do it from side to side and from top to bottom. It's really gonna help that rub penetrate into the meat. Now that's all the trimming this pork butt needs. Let's go ahead and inject it. If I was smoking this pork butt on my Kamado Joe, it might not be necessary to inject it, but I think on the kettle it's necessary. Into my injection, this is what I add. One cup of apple juice, one quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, one quarter cup of water, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, one and a half teaspoons of your favorite rub, two tablespoons of real maple syrup, and one tablespoon of melted butter. Then shake it all together. The key to injecting a piece of meat is to inject it evenly from side to side, as well as from top to bottom. If you don't have an injector, I'll put a link to the one that I use in the description below. Now, I always like to put my pork butt in a shallow pan because some of this injection always tends to leak out. And if you really want to upset your wife, go ahead and skip that part. Imagine a pattern on top of the pork butt. We want to start in one corner and work your way across the top in a checkerboard pattern. Fill up the injector and insert the needle almost all the way through the meat, but don't poke it out the bottom. As you inject, pull the needle out slowly. This process will help spread the injection from the bottom to the top. Then just move through your pattern, injecting about every inch. Now that we have it injected, we need to put some rub on the outside. To help it stick, I like to add a thin coating of yellow mustard. Now this doesn't add any flavor to the meat, but the vinegar does help it tenderize a little. Now, you don't need much, just a thin layer over all the surfaces. Now let's add a little flavor with some rub. If you've watched my videos in the past, you know that I love the meat church rubs, and my favorite for pork butt is the honey bacon barbecue. This stuff has sugar, salt, honey powder, garlic, and a few other spices, and I'll put a link below in the description so you can pick some up. Now, if you can't get your hands on some, I'll put a simple recipe below for one I use as a backup. Give that pork butt a liberal coating of the rub. I really don't think you could use too much. Making sure you cover all the surfaces, including those edges. 
Now that we got it all covered, let's let it rest while we get our grill ready. As I mentioned before, I'm going to be using my 26 inch Weber kettle to smoke this pork butt. But to help give it a better smoke, I'm going to be using my new slow and sear that Steve over at SNS Grill sent me. And I'll put a link below if you want to pick one up. Now, if you need some help putting your Weber kettle together, I'll also put a link to a video right up here. Also, Justin, better known as Baby Back Maniac, helped set up the introduction with Steve over an SNS Grill. And I'll also put a link below to his channel. Go over and say hi and tell him Coleman sent you. They sent me a whole box of goodies that I'm gonna be using in some upcoming videos. So special thanks to both Steve and Justin. The slow and sear really helps set up that two zone cooking in the kettle. Plus with the water trough that they put up front, it helps keep the humidity up in my grill. And I gotta say, this thing is stout. This thing is very well made and I'm sure it's gonna give me years of great service. And if you just compare it to the one that came with my kettle, honestly, there's no comparison. This slow and sear is about four times the weight. Now this one is specifically made for my 26 inch kettle, but they also make one for a 22 inch kettle. And this thing is so easy to use, much easier than setting up the snake or the minion method in my grill. Just set it in your grill on top of the charcoal grate, place 10 to 15 charcoal briquettes in the corner, Fill the water trough up with boiling water and light the charcoal. Remember, never use lighter fluid in your grill. To pick up one of these torches, click on the link in the description. Once they're lit and going, fill the remainder of the slow and sear up with charcoal. For pork, I love hickory wood. So now is a good time to add a few chunks. Space them out a little bit so you get a long smoke time. Then put the top grate into the grill and close the lid. We also need to close down the bottom vent to about a quarter open and the top vent to about a third open. We're shooting for a temperature of about 250 degrees. So once we start getting close, we're gonna start closing off that top vent a little bit more. And once we're at 250 and stable and our smoke has changed to a transparent color, it's time to get that pork butt on the heat. I've already set up my temperature probe from my CyberQ cloud in the grill to help track that temperature. As I mentioned earlier, because our heat is coming from the top of the grill, we want to place our pork butt on the grill fat cap up. Then I insert the other temperature probe into the meat without hitting the bone. We're going to let this pork butt smoke until it hits an internal temperature of 140 degrees. Then I'm going to check it to see if it needs a little spritz. That should take about three to four hours. At that point, if the bark is set in nicely, then we're going to spritz it with straight apple cider vinegar every 30 minutes. I'll check back with you when we hit that point. My CyberQ cloud has said that we've hit an internal temperature of 140 degrees, so let's go ahead and check on it. But before we do, if you're enjoying this video and you're getting some value out of it, hit that subscribe button below and click on that thumbs up. It really helps more people find my videos. Man, I love the color this rub adds to my pork butt. The bark is starting to set in nicely, so let's go ahead and give it a spritz. The spritz I'm using today is 100% apple cider vinegar, but you can use a 50-50 mix with apple cider vinegar and apple cider. Just spritz it enough to make it shiny. I'm gonna continue to spritz this every 30 minutes until it hits an internal temperature of 165 degrees. That should take us about one or two more hours. Now I'll see you back when we're ready for the next step. All right, we're right at 165 degrees and it's been on for about five hours. At this point, it's really done cooking and wrapping it is really gonna help tenderize it. To preserve the bark, I like to wrap it in butcher paper instead of using aluminum foil. If you don't have butcher paper, I'll put a link below to the stuff that I use. You can use foil, but you run the risk of really softening up that bark. Foil tends to hold in more moisture where butcher paper will let it out. I like to double wrap to make sure it gets a good seal. There's no need to add any moisture to the inside of the package. There's still plenty of internal fat that needs to render out. Then back on the heat. We're gonna leave this on the heat till we hit an internal temperature of about 205, but we're really looking more for tenderness instead of an exact internal temperature. I'll share more on that later. My CyberQ cloud is now telling me that we hit an internal temperature of 205, so let's go ahead and check on it. To check to see if it's done, I'm gonna use my instant read thermometer. Poke it into the thickest part of the meat without hitting the bone. It needs to feel like it's going into room temperature butter. If it doesn't, it needs to stay on a few more minutes. But this one is perfect, so let's go ahead and get it off the heat. 
At this point, we still don't want to unwrap this thing. It needs to rest for a few more hours. To do that, I'm going to wrap it in one of my honey's nice towels from the guest bathroom. You know the one. Then place it in an empty ice chest and close the lid. This step is one of the most important steps to getting this pork butt tender, so please don't skip it. It needs to rest here for at least an hour, but preferably two. During that time, the meat juices are gonna redistribute throughout the meat, and that fat is gonna continue to render down. So while it rests, let's review what we did. First, we removed it from the package and trimmed off all the excess fat cap. Next, we injected it and covered it with a thin coating of mustard. We then covered it in some of our favorite meat church rub and put it on the grill to soak up some of that hickory love. Then while we waited for it to come up to 165 degrees, we spritzed it every 30 minutes. When it hit that point, we took it off the heat and wrapped it up in butcher paper. Then it went back on the heat till it was probe tender. Once it was, we took it off the heat, wrapped it in a towel and let it rest in an ice chest. I went ahead and took this out of the ice chest and unwrapped it from the towel. And just to be safe, I threw that towel in the bottom of the hamper so my honey wouldn't find it. Now let's open this baby up. <laughs> now that's a beautiful butt. This crust is just perfect. Man, and I wish you could smell it. Now you're gonna wanna wear gloves for these next few steps. I wear cotton gloves underneath my nitrile gloves just to keep my hands safe. And I'll put a link below to the ones that I use. Now let's get it off the paper and onto the cutting board. Before I start pulling this apart, the great thing about a bone-in pork butt is it has a built-in instant read thermometer and it's called the bone. This thing should pull out nice and clean if I did everything right. Perfectly done, nice and clean. The first thing I like to remove is that money muscle that I talked about earlier. It's gonna be opposite of the bone. Just grab it, pull it out, and set it aside. That piece right there has gotta be my favorite part. Now let's tear into the rest. There's really no need to invest in those expensive claws or shears. I just start taking the individual muscles and pulling them apart. And I also like to tear it in long strips, just like this. I'll take a piece and I'll rip it into long pieces, just like this. If you plan on freezing some of this later, leave some of those bigger pieces together. It'll definitely reheat a lot easier. The great thing about pulled pork is it can be used in so many different ways. You could do it with or without sauce. You can put it in a sandwich, on a slider, toppings on a pizza, put it in some queso, a smoked mac and cheese, or my favorite is definitely the Texas Twinkies. Now all the videos for those recipes can be found on my channel. Let's see how this tastes. I'm gonna take this piece right here. Still has some of the crust left on it. Mm. Wow. That has got a great smoke flavor. That hickory wood did an amazing job on that. You can see the smoke ring on this pulled pork, how it penetrated deep into that meat. And the injection that we put inside really left this extremely moist. I'm gonna go back in for another bite. Mm. Mm. Wow. You know, sometimes I like to eat this with sauce, but usually this is the way that I enjoy it. Just nice and plain that smoky flavor, that the, the flavor from that meat church rub, this stuff is amazing. My honey's over there giving me the snake eye. I don't know if it's because of the towel or she just wants some of this pulled pork, but I better go. I have some very exciting news. We started this journey together about 11 months ago, and yesterday we hit 900 subscribers on our YouTube channel. This has been an exciting ride, and I truly owe it all to you folks. Thank you very much for all your support of the channel. And to celebrate, I wanna send each and every one of you one of my grilling and chilling stickers. Just go to my website, the link is down below. Click on the Contact Us page, send me your mailing address and I'll send one out to you free of charge and I'll even pay for the shipping. If you're not part of the grilling and chilling community on Facebook and Instagram, you're really missing a lot of fun. Thank you again for joining me in the GNC kitchen. If you like this video, here's a few more you might like. And also subscribe right up here and give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to click that bell. It'll let you know when I've got some new videos coming out. 
I always enjoy spending time with you in the GNC kitchen and sharing my recipes. Now y'all go grill something. <laughs>